should landlords self-manage in 2024? Today, I'm joined by Paul Champelina, who is the boss man of Landlord Action and the chief commercial officer of Hamilton Fraser. Paul, should landlords be self-managing nowadays? Talk to me. So look, if you're a new landlord in 2024, a newbie landlord, no, 100% you shouldn't be. You know, uh, there is too much going on and there's too many ways of tripping yourself up when it comes to renting properties. Bear in mind, the tenant, the consumer, because they are consumers, are more clued up than ever before. There is a lot of uh, uh, representation now for tenants when it comes to claims. For example, you don't put deposit in the deposit scheme. There's, there, you can be free, free no, time plus I, deposit. I, I find it fascinating. So many landlords get clobbered by that one. The, the law only came out in April the 6th, 2007, Chris. <laughs> so we're now in 2024. And of course, we run my deposits. We've got 150,000 landlords and, you know, three and a half thousand netting agents that use my deposit scheme. And that was a law that came in. You know, you don't put the deposit deposit call. You can be five, three times plus, you know, dealing landlords trying to do inventory. They haven't got a clue. You know, we turn around and say at my deposits, we, we want third party proper reports. So, you know, a pictures say a thousand words, you know, to try and do an inventory yourself is scandalous. You know, then of course, there's all the property management, there's the deregulation at the gas safety, and then there's doing the licensing. It's really, really troublesome. And bearing up, most landlords have a full-time job as well. And then you have an overseas landlord. So the answer to your question is you know, they need to be using a letting agent. But of course you have a lot of property professional landlords that are portfolio landlords that have also had bad experiences with letting agents. You know, we've had landlords that have ended up setting up letting agents because they've had a bad experience with a letting agent locally when they were renting their own property. So I think the days of self-management being a landlord, and I, I preach and I have all these talks to landlords, is you should be using a letting agent. Uh, and of course, a lot of the landlords nowadays are older, have been older, but you've got now the new generation of landlords coming to the market that are much more property technology savvy, that we use platforms like Open Rent, you know, or Hello Neighbour, or Mushroom or whatever, just to try and do that let and then try and manage it themselves. But I think that the biggest problem that landlords have is they don't put a price on their time. And that's where they fall down because cheap is always expensive. So I'd rather have a, a property professional. But then that course, we need that perception from a letting agent to a landlord that I am a property professional. And you're worth the money because there's a lot of letting agents out there that take 10% and all they are is a rent collection service. They take 10% and the rent collection service, it's a false comedy letter only to full management. And I can tell you at least 25% of the complaints we get at the property redress scheme, we have over a thousand complaints a year where our adjudicators do relate to poor communication, poor management service on PRS members. So yeah, you need to make sure that uh, if you're having an agent, you know what they're doing and how they're doing it. But as a landlord, are, are you fully briefed? You know, going on to some of these landlord training courses, you know, which cost a lot, you know, I'm looking at doing uh, putting together a, a landlord uh, training day for 150 quid plus fat, want value for money, and I'm making sure that the speakers at this event, it's called Landlords How to Survive. Well, I'm going to be doing them all over the country. Is I'm going to have I'm going to have landlords and experts that have had at least 20 years experience, but uh, no BS. And I think that's really important to make sure that you have the right resources and the right education products mainly. What advice would you give to landlords? There's 10 letting agents on the high street. Some are part of some clubs of agents or schemes. What advice would you give to find a good letting agent? So it, it depends where you're located. Do you live near where that property is? So you'll be much more clued up. You'll see that, I mean, the best thing to do is actually go on allagents.co.uk as a landlord or even a tenant and put in the review of the agent, see what comes up. That's the first, everyone looks at reviews nowadays. But if you're a landlord locally, well, then you'll know about local reputation. So you've got a bit of a head start. Get a landlord that recommends another agent. Get testimonials, which is really important. But go into their offices. Get a feel. You know, if you have a property that's 60 miles away and, or 100 miles away, which, you know, you've got a lot of London investors investing in the Northwest or whatever, 
is it really is about really tapping in and really doing your due diligence and taking your time to find the right agent because it's not money driven it's about service because of course what's the name of the game chris the name of the game the tenant the consumer he rents a property or she rents a property for a year what does the landlord want he wants that tenant to stay as long as possible he doesn't want any voids you know and that's important but and most tenants prefer dealing with letting agents rather than landlords and unfortunately with tenants nowadays they are driven by the property and the price so they don't know who the agent is or who the landlord is what about being a member of a certain scheme like property mark or rics do you think that makes a difference yeah i think uh, being a member of a trade body makes a big difference whether the consumer understands what the trade body is is a different story you know and i know the property mark have done a whole big big, big piece to try and educate the end user being the consumer but yeah what does that badge mean what is their qualifications you know if you have had qualifications as a letting agent talk about it be a peacock what questions do you think landlords should be asking the boys and girls that in the offices at of the agents what questions well unfortunately the most common questions aren't the right questions the most common questions are how much can you get my property when can you let it how much do you charge so there are three common questions you ask a letting agent really a landlord should be saying to an agent okay is your fully management service explain what you do from a to z yeah i'm all ears do you have do you belong to the property redress scheme so there's redress can i see a copy of your client money protection certificate you know and what's your pi cover yeah <laughs> and then and then of course can i have two landlords that recommend you please you know i mean there's a million amount of questions but they'd be the fundamentals I'd be amazed that so many landlords won't ask that, do they? They would not ask that. They're driven by price of rent, how quickly, uh, and uh, yeah, just making sure. Too many landlords cut corners uh, to the detriment. You know, you've seen my program, Nightmare Tenant Slum Landlords. They are prime examples of landlords doing it yourself and doing it yourself wrongly. Thank you for your time today, Paul.